Uh oh, there's a lot of distortion on the videos I made of this organ because the camera's too close because I wanted you to sort of see the stops and things. So we'll have a quick look round it now while I'm not playing it and then I'll, I'll set the camera up where the sound is a bit better and we'll have a look. To uh, start off, oh, this is the bit I'm most proud of. Let's see if I can actually... Oh dear, the light isn't very good. The light is never very good with these things, is it? Let me see. Can we see the... Yes, there we are. Mr. Compton's name plate. The John Compton Organ Company, London NW10. Um, if you know Compton organs, that'll tell you a lot more about it than uh, anything I can say now. But uh, we'll have a look along the, the row of stops. This is a one manual organ. Um, and you can see some of the keys um, are kind of this bluey grey kind of colour. Um, and then we come down here and we get into the white ones. If I come back a bit, this is a bit more obvious. And uh, we have grey stops along here, which only work on this bit at the top front. Let me see, what's that? Uh, that's A in the middle C octave, right up the top C. Um, if you don't engage any of these grey stops, then the other stops occupy the whole manual, but as soon as you put, bring a grey one on these stops uh, finish here at J, uh, G in the middle C octave. So in the bass, these would be the pedal stops on a, a larger instrument no doubt, but we got bass, mezzo forte and bass pianissimo. Very conservative really, but the mezzo forte is nice and loud, um, so that's rather good. Uh, if you've seen the videos, it really sounds like a pedal entry when you bring one of those stops on. <coughs> Excuse me, so now we come to, to the other stops. Um, I suppose you'd call this the great, I mean there's only one manual, but I, I think of this is the great division. See, so we've got a, a manual 16 here of the uh, the Gigan, and, uh, and that could be a bit thinner to be quite honest. It is a little bit cloying, but then this is a very small building. And we've got diapason 8, and we find we've got great to 15th. If I come back a bit, there's, there's a diapason 8. Uh, principle 4 and the scaling on those is great actually the, the principle is just that little bit lighter and uh, a, a slightly narrower scale than, than the diapason and we come up um, 12th of course to uh, that, that draws the sound down it almost like gives you a, an extra read uh, there and it makes some of the flutes sound very authentic as well um, and of course 15th uh, the two foot pitch there and we have a mixture which uh, adds interest. Tromba, which when we engage the mute is a real nice chorus read. Um, well, it's still a chorus read with the mute off really, but it sounds a bit more biting then. And then we'll put those out of the way. And we've got other things. I mean, in the house I use this a lot, the, the Dulciana 8 and the Dulcet 4. That They go together really nicely. And if you put the, the mute on and use it with the quieter bass paddle, you get, I think, really quite a nice sound from that. So, there's a lot to, to play with there. Uh, we come along and the, the black stops, as you, well, it's not that easy to see the black stops, is it? But we have the uh, the mute here, and then we come along a bit. Light vibrato, which is a nice sort of churchy kind of sound, goes well with the oboe. Um, heavy vibrato, which gives you that sort of theatrical tremulant effect. And reverberation, uh, to be quite honest, it has a very, very good reverb system for the 1960s, but quite honestly, I, I, I'm not that keen on it. I, I don't use it a lot. Um, so we come to the solo stops. Again, we've got a flute 16, and by having the 16-foot register, that means that you've almost got a full keyboard's worth of notes on, on the grey section, because that actually starts from uh, G in the bass octave, uh, in terms of pitch footage. So that's quite useful and of course it adds gravity and it, it makes a big difference to the other solo stops. So very helpful that. Uh, Concert Flute 8 has a, a, again a lovely sort of sound, almost like a clarabelle flute that one. And then we have three different reeds. We've got, uh, where are we? Mm -hmm. Clarinet, eight foot there with uh, the red writing on it. Oboe, which is a very gentle one actually, uh, the clarinet is, I meant to say, the clarinet is very good for the the, uh, the theatrical tones. So the oboe there, which is a, a thinner sound and really nice. The horn is quite loud and that, that gives you a real clang in the last verse of a hymn, that, that's a good one there. 
then a flute 4 to augment it. That's actually a very nice flute on its own. And, uh, you know, if you use these stops individually in the different footages, you, you can play very large, um, very long runs of notes, very comprehensive through the octaves using these things. And finally, we've got the Celesta. And uh, it's a really... It's a joy to have a thing like that uh, on a small organ like this. It's a bit like a vibraphone sound, and it makes it very special. Okay, just finally, I'll, I'll show you switching it on, because I really like this old switch here. Let's have a look. And you see it lights up, and no doubt you can hear the organ starting up. It takes a minute to warm up, so I'm now going to go and put the camera somewhere tidy, and uh, see if I can make a video with a bit of music on it. Okay, thanks for watching.